In 1968, a young geologist stumbled across something that, according to the scientific knowledge of the time, should not have existed. His discovery would rewrite the history of the human race and still causes controversy today. Never before had something so ancient and so rare been unearthed in such an isolated location. In July 1968, a young geomorphologist called Jim Bowler from the Australian National University in Canberra was on his way to study soil structures in New South Wales. Bowler was interested in climate change over time and was fascinated by the stories he had heard of a place called Lake Mungo. However, this lake had not held water in over 14,000 years. In 1968, Lake Mungo was a vast and dry landscape. Erosion had begun to reveal layers of soil millennia old. As Bowler began his investigations, he happened to notice something odd. There appeared to be fragments of human bones sticking out of the ground. Upon closer inspection, the bones appeared to have been burnt. Had he stumbled upon the site of a crime? As a geologist, Bowler knew that he could examine the dirt around the human remains for clues. He noticed that the ground and rock around the bone fragments had been undisturbed for thousands of years. Therefore, the human being must have died at that time. Bowler quickly came to the conclusion that this was not a modern criminal investigation, but an ancient archaeological mystery. However, Bowler knew that he did not have the equipment nor the training to study the remains at that time. So that he could do so later, he nailed an iron peg into the ground to remind himself of the location, and then he left. It would not be until the next year, in March 1969, that a team of archaeologists finally visited the lake to get to the bottom of this mystery. As experts in ancient artefacts, the team carefully recorded the ground around the bones for important clues. Once a full record had been made, the excavators carefully removed as much of the human remains as they could and transported it back to the university for study. More than 175 tiny fragments of human skeleton were recovered. After careful examination, pieces of the puzzle began to emerge. It appeared that the skeleton belonged to a young woman that had died tens of thousands of years ago. But what had killed her? Unfortunately, her remains had been burnt in an apparent cremation, which had destroyed much of the evidence and the body of the deceased woman. Unfortunately, the tiny fragments that remained were not enough to determine her cause of death. So, less than two years after her discovery, the mystery of the Mungo Lady was unsolved. With no way of knowing who she was, or why she had died in such an isolated area, the scientists had to conclude their study by simply calling her the Mungo Lady. With so little information to go on in such a great period of time since her death, archaeologists gave up thinking that they would ever know more about this mysterious young lady. But the mystery was about to deepen. Five years later, in 1974, Jim Bowler was back at the lake, continuing his study of the soil. His discovery had been constantly interrupted by the discovery of mounds of broken shells from marine animals. It was almost as if an ancient community had been living along the lake's prehistoric shoreline, eating shellfish and piling the remains into mounds. Now, thousands of years later, their rubbish was being rediscovered. Also, Bowler was finding remains that indicated human activity, such as stone objects. Bowler felt that these tiny scraps of evidence indicated that humans had been living in Australia for tens of thousands of years, but he was not prepared for what he saw next. One day, Bowler noticed another bright white bone lodged in a rock in the ground. Since he only had managed to excavate the tiny bone fragments from Mungo Lady, Bowler began careful inspection to recover whatever tiny fragments might have survived the millennia this time. Much to his surprise, the geologist unearthed a full arm bone. To have a complete human bone intact after so long, Bowler could not believe his luck. Excitedly, he kept removing more of the rock, only to find a second bone, then a third, a fourth, and even more. After hours of tireless work, Bowler eventually sat back speechless. He was staring at a perfectly complete human skeleton from head to toe. He had discovered an entire human being. Bowler called his archaeological team back and it was soon determined that the remains were not of a woman this time, but a man. Had he found a second person from Mungo Lady's time? <laughs>
Had this ancient man and woman even known each other? The remains were quickly called Mungo Man. But how long had Mungo Man been in the ground? What could a complete human skeleton tell us about the world thousands of years ago? To answer these questions, the remains had to be taken to a lab for further study. Bowler and his team carefully transferred Mungo Man back to the National University in Canberra, where the forensic team examined the remains. They discovered that Mungo Man probably stood 170 centimetres high when he was alive, and he probably died at around the age of 50. Then they used radiocarbon dating to try and find out how long ago he had lived, but the results shocked everyone. The scientific community expected that human beings had migrated to Australia perhaps 10,000 years ago. Some are only willing to say that it may have been closer to 20,000 years. But the carbon-14 results showed that Mungo Man and Mungo Lady had lived approximately 42,000 years ago. This meant that both these remarkable individuals were, by far, the oldest human remains in Australia. The news of this discovery caused a sensation. In an incident, Bowler's findings had rewritten the history of human migrations into Australia. Scientists at the time had no idea that Indigenous people had continuously occupied this part of the world for so long. Global interest fueled further archaeological work at Mungo. Archaeologists descended on Lake Mungo to try and find out more. Very quickly, more evidence of human occupation appeared right across the landscape. It became clear that Mungo Man and Mungo Lady were not the only people who lived along this ancient lake, as more than 130 ancient human remains were uncovered. Archaeologists found more shellfish remains, fossilised fish and a variety of stone tools, some dating as far back as the last ice age. It became clear that this was not just a few individuals who had migrated to Australia all those years ago, but whole communities of early humans had thrived on the natural resources around Lake Mungo. But could we really call these people humans? Were they really like us, or were they simply mindless cave dwellers? This is where the amazing Mungo Man remains became a scientific and historical marvel. This man, who had lived over 40,000 years ago, was buried in an incredibly puzzling way. Firstly, unlike the Mungo Lady, who had been burnt by her community after she died, this man was buried intact. His remains were intentionally covered by layers of dirt. However, there was clear evidence that those that buried him were not mindless savages, but thoughtful and caring human beings. Those that studied the remains noticed that Mungo Man's arms had been stretched out straight and carefully crossed over his body. This was not what people would do if they simply wanted to get rid of him as quickly as possible. There had been thought and consideration in the way that he was laid in the ground a millennia ago. But that was not the strangest thing that happened on the day of his burial. As scientists examined his remains, they discovered a layer of reddish-pink soil that had stained the white ground Mungo Man had been buried in. Scientific testing identified this pigment as red ochre. This kind of rock had obviously been ground into a powder and scattered over Mungo Man's body before he was buried. This may not seem like much of a reason for modern archaeologists to be amazed, except for the fact that the rocks from which red ochre come from do not exist in the Lake Mungo region. In fact, there is no source of ochre even a day's journey from the site. The closest possible source of this pigment is over 200 kilometres away. This meant that the people who buried Mungo Man specifically brought in a specially coloured rock for the deceased, taken time to turn it into powder, and carefully sprinkle it over the body of their loved one. These people from 40,000 years ago clearly loved, cared for and treasured this person. They were not mindless brutes. They were demonstrating the same human behaviours and emotions that we do today. Bowler's discoveries at Lake Mungo remain an important part of Australia's national history, particularly for the Indigenous people. However, for many First Nations people, they became deeply uncomfortable with having one of their ancestors being taken away from their traditional land. After four decades of campaigning, the remains of Mungo Lady and Mungo Man were finally handed back into the care of the Indigenous people in 2015. They are now kept in a secluded location back in the area where they once lived and died. Mungo Man and Mungo Lady are a scientific and archaeological marvel. They bear testimony to one of the oldest cultures in the history of the world. While we will never know the real names, nor how they lived, their deaths and burials 
have made a profound impact on our knowledge of human history.